Hey folks, welcome to the Rough Cuts. My name is Arlen and it's supposed to be Monday, but by the time I'm recording this it's already 1am on Tuesday in uh, Norway and it's probably gonna be later by the time I post this online. So what I'm trying to do to quicken this thing, quicken is not a word, I'm recording this uh, in one take instead of editing together 15 minutes of me rambling. So I've carefully scripted this review. Uh, Meek's Cutoff is the movie that I'm reviewing this week. It was produced in 2010 but not released until this year. It's uh, written by Jonathan Raymond and uh, directed by Kelly Reichard and they've made two films before. One is named Old Joy and the other is named Wendy and Lucy and they've been described as kind of neo-neo-realistic movies inspired by the neo-realist movement from a bunch of years ago. I really really enjoyed those movies and the thing about them is that they're kind of slow and they're shot with a 4x3 aspect ratio instead of a widescreen aspect ratio. There are a lot of static shots, a lot of mumbling and scenes featuring little to no dialogue which really forces you to pay attention to the story and the characters. And unlike those two films, this film is a western, uh, at least in the sense that it's set in the 1840s, which is kind of early for a western movie anyway. but. I think the other two films feel more like westerns in the sense of how the, their stories are structured than this because it's really only a story of a bunch of people trying to move across Oregon. I was slightly disappointed by this film just because I love the other two films so very very much. There are a lot of good actors in this movie and Paul Dano often plays kind of the same character in the same way and I often get kind of annoyed at him and his performances, but his performances in this movie is surprisingly non-distracting, which isn't really high praise, but I really enjoyed it, unlike a couple of his other performances. Bruce Greenwood plays Stephen Meek, the title character. And he's kind of eccentric and I think I heard or read a review at some point which described him as a poor man's Jeff Bridges from True Grit. And I think that's kind of an apt description even if it's kind of derogatory. And of course the kind of main character top billing is Michelle Williams who is uh, possibly one of the greatest actresses working today. Otherwise it's a nice ensemble, some fun characters and performances, but nothing really enormously noteworthy. And uh, there's a lot of really beautiful imagery in this film, but I think at some points the tension is kind of lacking, and if you have a short attention span then you should not watch this movie, because there really isn't a whole lot that's happening, and the climax and ending of the film is slightly underwhelming if you're expecting some Hollywood structural film. Well, I'm rambling. I'll probably end up editing this thing a bit anyway even though I said I wouldn't do that, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I was, as I said, slightly disappointed in this film only because those two other films from this writer and this director have been pretty amazing actually and um, I really didn't connect enough with these characters and this story, but it's still a really solid film and if you think you can pay attention for a hundred minutes, then uh, you should go check it out. I'll give it a 6 out of 10 rating and we'll see you next week with a slightly better review.